Hang on. Hello, hi, welcome so, thank you so much for joining us today. We have a special influence stories, um, given that it's Thanksgiving week and we won't be in a regular Thursday schedule because we will be enjoying our turkey. And we're going to talk about specifically what precautions we can take to have a safe Thanksgiving. And I am so honored that Vicky Perez, Director of Intensive Care Services at Jackson North Medical Center, is joining me here today. Vicky, thank you so much for joining me in this last minute interview. No, thank you. Uh, it's, it's really important to let the community know what precautions they need to take and what we need to do to stay safe during the holidays. That's right. So holiday season is beginning. Um, and, you know, of course, it starts with Thanksgiving, which is just around the corner, a couple of days away. But what we're going to talk about today is not just applicable to Thanksgiving. It's also good for Christmas. It's also good for birthdays and New Year's Eve, which is just coming around the corner. We have a lot of December and January birthdays in my family. So this is also important to keep in mind. So I'm going to start with some facts and some figures. This is the latest COVID-19 dashboard for Miami-Dade County. We have a daily positive rate of 7.15%, a 14-day average of 8.23%, and Jackson Health has a positive rate of 11%. Um, Vicki, can you explain to us what those numbers actually mean? What does a positivity rate mean? Well, right now, for instance, we have in the total system, we have 134 positive patients. And so we have seen an increase within the last two weeks. Uh, I'm gonna give you an example. In the ICU for the last month, we were averaging two patients a day and that was for consistently for, for about a month. And then on last Monday, I came in and we had nine. So I started to see an average of seven to nine patients daily. So it was a big increase as of last week and we haven't even started with uh you know the thanksgiving travel a lot of people i think it's been so many months that people are kind of like are over the you know the covid they want to see their families they want to travel i've heard people tell me oh travel is so cheap now it's the time to go you know and it's so important to understand that we have so many people in our community that are vulnerable and we might not be um you know sick we might not have uh, diabetes or or anything like that but we might have a family member that we might think that we're gonna go spend some time with them we give it to them they give it to their friends and it's just a circle that you know a never-ending circle as us in healthcare like to say and so it's very important to understand that we're not only affecting ourselves we're also affecting our community in general and sometimes people that we you know, we love a lot. So we need to understand that, yes, there has been a rise and we haven't even gotten to Thanksgiving. So, uh, you know, us as nurses, doctors, we're all concerned that this is going to bring another spike. So from two patients to seven, seven. Um, that is a huge jump. I mean, I don't even know how much percentage of increase that is, but that's a lot. Um, so let's talk about a little bit. I want to remind all of our uh, viewers that we are here with Vicky Perez. She is the director of intensive care services at Jackson North Medical Center. And please, I want to encourage you to ask your questions. Um, let me ask you something else. Um, what is it? A lot of people say, oh, you know, there's an increase in numbers because there are more people getting tested. What do you what is the medical professional in you answer to that? I don't agree with that. Uh, I think people at the beginning were testing just out of curiosity as well. Uh, and the numbers were high. Uh, I think people are generally coming in sick. Uh, you just test more, you wouldn't be in the ICU. So a lot of people uh, are coming in and they're generally sick. Sometimes, yes, they'll come in with uh, abdominal pain. They do, have, they, are, they do have COVID, which is even scarier because they don't have any symptoms and they're walking around. Uh, so to me, it's actually scarier that we have people that don't have any symptoms and they're testing positive. 
So those are the ones that really scare me as an ICU nurse because those are the ones that are walking around in our community. They don't have any sniffles. They don't have any cough. They don't have any nausea. And so they're just going, you know, about their day, you know, at work or, uh, sorry, um, and, and don't think they have anything and they're just spreading it, you know, to their kids, uh, kids that are going to school, uh, to their friends. We don't know where it's going to end up. And so if you don't have any symptoms, might get just you know you might have a, a person that has covid that doesn't have a very high you know doesn't have a lot of the symptoms but then you have someone that's elderly chemotherapy how many people don't we know that are on chemo right now young and old uh lupus diabetics uh, a lot of renal patients and that one person that we didn't stay home we didn't put that mask on we didn't take the precautions gets it because of us and so for me, it's a little scarier now that we're seeing so many people that don't have all the symptoms and then positive. Uh, and so that tells me that we need to, to, you know, we need to take care of ourselves and make sure that we don't give it to, to those that are most vulnerable. And also, um, let's talk about actually, we're going to go back to, to that as well, but let's talk about the fact that um, a positivity rate is a percentage of the tests that were taken, right? So if you have five tests, your positivity rate would be a certain amount. And if you have a hundred tests, that doesn't really affect the fact that you take more tests doesn't actually affect the positivity rate. Correct. Right. So when we talk about these figures of 7.15 or 8.23% of positivity rate, it doesn't really mean that there are more tests being uh, given. It just means that they're, they're, we're increasing in positivity rate. Right. So do you remember when was the last time we were in this positivity rate? Probably about a month and a half ago. Um, like I said, we were consistent. You know, I was quite happy uh, for about a month. I said, wow, you know, we're really going down. I mean, uh, people are probably, you know, are, are more taking it serious. And then I saw, like I said, I got here that Monday and I said, uh oh, this is, you know, that's how I noticed, you know, every shift I would check my numbers and I could tell right away it was a huge spike up. So, you know, one of my nurses said, and I said it before, they're like, oh no, here we go again. And and I hope that's not it. We need to understand that, you know, the nurses, the doctors, everyone's working so hard to make sure everyone, you know, uh, gets well, leaves the hospital. And yes, the majority of the patients do very well. We've had over 3,500 um, patients leave the hospital, which is great. But some that don't and those are the ones that we have to make sure that we are you know are safe and we're making the community safe for those patients and there there's another thing um people always say well you know only the sick and the old people um should stay home or should be careful but we have seen in the media and in reality many cases of very young seemingly healthy people that end up in the ICU. And so tell us a little bit about, about that, about is it just the old sick people that need to watch out? Why are young people ending up in the ICU with COVID? Um, that I'm not sure exactly, you know, is there different strains? I mean, we haven't had it out long enough to be able to study that, but I can tell you, we've had a lot of young, healthy people uh, they go to the gym, runners, uh, people that um, have no past medical history and they've been very, very sick or have expired because of this, um, you know, because of the COVID. Uh, and also we have these young people that might not get as sick, but they're in the community and they can pass it from one person to the next. So we need to not only think about ourselves, but we need to think about our community and our, not necessarily our family, our neighbor, uh, the person that's going to the store. It could be anyone. And it, I've seen an increase in young people. At the beginning, when it first started, we had a big influx of um, patients from ALFs and nursing homes, a lot of elderly patients. But as that first uh, spike started to go down, the second spike that we got was the majority young people, young, mm -hmm. healthy people. And, and young people as well that had pre-existing conditions that they didn't know they had. You know, exactly. a lot of people don't regularly go to the doctor. Uh, right now, because of the pandemic, 
the doctors have kind of taken a backseat, unfortunately. So there's a lot of young people out there that are hypertensive, that have diabetes, uh, that they don't know they have. And so, you know, if they get this, then then they'll know, but then it'll be too late. They'll end up in ICU or in, on the floors or, or giving it to somebody else as well. That's exactly right. And so that's very important thing you're talking about that they end up in the ICU and to end up in the ICU, it's not just regular hospitalization. Correct. This is much more involved. I mean, this is critical care. Correct. Um, so they are very, very sick. It's not just like, oh, I, you know, there's this course is going around. Oh, it's just a cold. Oh, it's not worse than the flu. Well, tell me about the difference of how of numbers of people that end up in the ICU due to COVID or due to the flu? Well, currently um, the flu will, you know, you'll have, you know, maybe, I don't know, one a month uh, that would get very sick. And those are- One a month, one yeah. a month. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and with COVID? We've had, I, at one point when we were very, you know, at the beginning, I, I had about 26 a day with COVID. In and the ICU? In the ICU. So, for everyone out there that keeps saying, oh, this is no worse than the flu, one patient a month in the ICU compared to 20 something because of COVID. So um, this is something that's very, very scary. But the good thing is that there are ways that we can protect ourselves from, yeah. from us getting COVID or from giving it to somebody we love. Because let's remember that if we're gonna get together with people in Thanksgiving, it is with people that we love the most, our family members, our grandmas, our grandpas, our tias, our tios. So what can we do this Thanksgiving? And as we begin the holiday season, what can we do to keep our family safe and to keep ourselves safe? Most important, wear the mask, wear the mask. My, my mother's elderly and at home, I wear my mask. I, when I get home from work, I do like a complete, like, uh, you know, everything off every you know, I wear the mask at home because I I don't want her to get sick and I know it's hard you know uh, at least for my culture Hispanics we love the hug we love the kiss and it's been a real change for us you know but you know I throw my kisses you know with my mask on kind of you know and but I know that I'm keeping her safe I would feel so bad if, if I you know, if I would give her this, it, I would never be able to live with myself. So for me to wear the mask, I just, it, it's, it's a duty, you know, you have to do this for, for your family. So you're going to eat at Thanksgiving with your family, you know, wear a mask. If, if you, you know, if you, you might not necessarily have the symptoms right away as you're traveling and someone gives it to you, it may take a couple of days. And by then you've already given it to everyone. So I think, you know, I, uh, you said a quote earlier and I think it's, I, I like it a lot. Uh, it's better to, you know, be home for, for Thanksgiving than, in, you know, Christmas in the ICU. And nobody wants that. We want to make sure that we are safe. You know, I know Thanksgiving is, is very meaningful. It's something that we always spend with our family, but there's a lot of innovative things we can do. We can do Zoom. We can do uh, FaceTime. And I mean, it's just sacrifice until this gets under control uh, and, and we're able not to spread it. But if you do have to travel, there's so many things you need to do. You need to make sure you have sanitizer, that you're sanitizing your hands, that you're wearing your mask correctly, not under your nose, or I've seen some people even under their chin. Yeah, why bother? <laughs> Wear it. Don't be afraid to tell people to stand back. You know, sometimes, you know, I get in a line somewhere that something that I have to go and there's people right behind me. It's okay to educate people. Not everyone is aware of what's going on. That's why we do these. We want to make sure everyone's informed. Let people know, hey, you know, please stand back. Uh, you know, you somebody needs to speak up. And if we don't start speaking up as a community, we're not going to get this under control. And this is just like any, you know, it's 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 something that's spread, uh, you know, through, you know, you have to be six feet apart. So very mm -hmm. important you're in the airport, you know, you have to wear that mask because as you all know, airplanes, you know, the air circulates, you're very yeah. close to one another. I, I heard some of the airplanes are no longer uh, using the middle seat empty. So it's going to be full. So take care of yourself. Make sure, you know, the temperature checks, they're done. But once you have a fever, you've already transmitted it to 
mm -hmm. many other people if you're if you're around without a mask so the main mm -hmm. thing keep apart wear masks if you do travel you know stay at least uh they say seven to ten days uh you know from from me making sure you're you know uh as they say apart from from your family if you're on a business trip or you have to go somewhere but it, i know that 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 um especially the young people i've heard a lot oh the the, the flights are so cheap they're cheap but they get very expensive when it's somebody's life so take a moment we have enough time we're gonna have enough time to travel in the future i i'm i'm one of those that loves to travel so i'm dying but I, I would not be able to go somewhere knowing that I get my daughter sick, my husband or myself. Mm -hmm. That's right. So some of the things we can do during this holiday season, we're keeping it very small, literally just um, my husband, my two daughters um, and my mother-in-law. And we all take care to not um, so we take care of ourselves for her. Um, and that's it usually it's the uncles, the friends, the cousins. We're not doing that this year. Um, one of the good things is you can do it outside. You could have, you know, we're very lucky. We live in Miami. The weather's going to be beautiful. We can have the dinner outside so that everybody can have more space perhaps and be uh, distance from each other. Wear the mask. Of course, when you're going to be eating, the problem is that you can't wear the mask. So let's try to keep the separation. Like you said, if you're going to travel, mask, hand sanitizer, try to keep your distance from everybody. Um, and, you know, key, I think the key is to keep it as small. If you're going to be at home, keep it as small as possible. Um, you know, these 20, 25, 30 people celebrations, this may just may not be the year for them. Um, and we're all suffering collectively together. Um, we're all, you know, at this point, we've been, you know, the first show I had with Jackson about COVID was in March, I believe. So we we're all fatigued. We're all or March or no, I think it was already April, but we're all exhausted. We're all tired. You guys more than anyone. Um, and everyone says, you know, let's be grateful for our medical, you know, our frontline workers and you know, our medical heroes and our and our health heroes. But I think the best way that we can be thankful to all of you is to stay home, wear a mask, and keep our distance. I agree 100%. <laughs> uh, my me all the time, oh, healthcare hero, but we still see people with no masks. I mean, the best way you can honestly uh, help the community, help us to be able to, you know, you know, we take care of these patients every day. We're at risk all the time, and that's our job. And we do it every day, and we love it. I mean, it's what we do. Uh, but we need everyone's help uh, because the best way that you can honor us is not by signs or gifts. The biggest thing you can do is to create awareness, make sure that everyone's wearing masks, that we're doing everything we can to stay safe and make the community safe. Well, I thank you so much uh, for your time, Vicki, and I wish you the best possible Thanksgiving and holiday season. Thank so thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to everyone that tuned in. And please share this video with your friends if they need a little reminder as to how to stay safe uh, during Thanksgiving. Happy thank Thanksgiving. you and happy Thanksgiving.